please note that this video contains spoilers. Armed Season th 6 Thoughts. So, this is where it gets pretty overt in just showing off skin as far as the seasons go. And the writing is not all good. I would say this season has some of my least favorite episodes of the entire show, but also some of my most. The obvious thing to talk about with this season is the character of Chris. He was introduced in the finale of season 5, and we spend this season just finding out who he is and what exactly his intentions are. It was made clear in the season finale of season 5 that he knew more than he was letting on, and he did let some things happen that offhand do seem pretty bad. And it was also made clear that he had some plans that he wanted Leo out of the way for. In this, we have Leo returning in the very first episode. Yeah, he's such an integral part of the show, you can't really keep him away for terribly long. And one of the first things he says is that he changed. He has changed because he was stuck in the cage fighting gladiator battles with a skull that they really like to show that the prop department provided for them in the first two episodes of the season, Val Halley of the Door, Dolls, parts one and two. Leo changing, he becomes a bit of a badass. He dons his best furrowed brow and Clint Eastwood impersonation, and he actually kind of pulls it off. He does, he is kind of badass in this season. The, returning to Chris, it, I think the show does a pretty good job of balancing, you're never entirely convinced that he's just evil, but you can't completely shake that feeling that he has something else going on, you know, he keeps glaring at Wyatt and, you know, saying, you know, in time, you'll trust me too, and they all will, and I should be afraid of you, Wyatt, and, you know, stuff like that. And then, you know, we realize that he's not only a white ladder, he's also a witch, when Bianca, the buxom assassin of the future, comes back to, yeah, to take him out, and we, that's when we realize that he wasn't just protecting Wyatt from evil, he was trying to prevent Wyatt from turning evil to become the greatest force of evil of all time. And I think no matter what your feelings on the whole Wyatt arc, Wes Ramsey is just awesome. As Wyatt. In this season we only see him as evil Wyatt, but he's just, just awesome and it's also interesting to see how they conceive of evil when, you know, when we see characters otherwise thought of as good turning evil with, you know, it's apparently hair, it's the color of your clothes, you know, make that darker, it's facial piercings, and that's about it. That's that's evil. And fast cars and broken cars. Very evil. So Chris, and finally we realize that he is indeed the charmed ones, or you know, Leo and Piper's second son, the baby brother of Wyatt. I personally really like Chris. I think he was a good addition to this season. 
I think he does a pretty good acting job. The actor's name escapes me at the moment. And he's just, you know, he's as neurotic as Piper, or just about, and, you know, very determined, and he can pull off both, you know, when he's, like, scared and insecure, and when he's kind of confident. It's maybe very lucky that he just disappears at the end of the season. I'm not sure how he would really fit in to the seventh season. And, you know, he doesn't even leave a corpse. He just fades away. And it is a good kind of moment with, you know, they, they realize and we realize they didn't lose Chris. He just, you know, he's there. He's just now an infant. The season finale is one of my favorites. The two-parter, it's a bad, 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 bad world. I believe that's the correct amount of bads. The whole alternate plane, you know, all alternate world where everything that was good is now evil and vice versa. Also, strip clubs, very evil. I, I just love, I mean, personally, I love the whole alternate world thing, but also just how they pull it off, you know. It has some really priceless, you know, the, the look of the people who are now the reverse of the morality they were before, you know. Evil Leo and Chris are just a riot. You know, the the spiky hair on Leo and and his evil beard, you know, ever since a certain episode of Star Trek the original series, we've known beards, you know, the the goatee kind of evil, very evil. Although I guess that's also, you know, a common depiction of Lucifer. Anyway, the whole thing, you know, and Leo wants to return Chris to a world of evil, and you know, one of the best parts, Barbus, the good Barbus, the other world's Barbus is just hilarious. A complete hippie, and still kind of creepy, you know, the, the whole thing, you know, both of the worlds that we see, you know, both the alternate evil world is creepy and the the real world getting turned into this, you know, Pleasantville, as Paige puts it, version of itself, immensely creepy. You know, everyone's so chipper and, you know, people getting, yeah, seriously harmed for, you know, minor infractions. And in general, just, you know, Barbas, so much fun. You know, in, in both parts, also when we see the evil one and he points out, you know, that he's the one doing all the work for Gideon and how he just leaves Gideon to die when, you know, he sees that Leo is, you know, killing him with the electrical... I'm not even sure we had seen the Elder's use that kind of power before, but it's definitely pretty awesome. Again, you know, Leo as the badass, you know, he f closes off the season by, you know, roasting Gideon. And Gideon himself, also a pretty good character, you know, it's that kind of ideology run wild character with he's certain that it's what needs to be done, that it'll save the future. He believes that the reason, you know, it all goes wrong is that why it even exists. And, you know, we realize, you know, I believe it's Leo who puts it together, that it's Gideon's repeated attacks on Wyatt, you know, trying to, you know, get through his defenses, I guess. 
to kill him even though he's such a powerful being and it, and he never succeeds you know I could easily see even tiny little infant Wyatt take out Gideon the powerful elder you know that that's what turns him and that makes good sense you know and it's the whole nature versus nurture which is also somewhat explored in the episode with the Minotaurs you know and the you know that thing of yes this baby might be half Minotaur but you know this regular guy is going to raise it and he's certain that that will you know that it will turn out good the power of three blondes is I don't know I guess the whole it's it's a good contrast with you know you see these three sisters really don't get along and they just barely put up with each other because they are stronger together and you know the real charmed ones are much better at you know they actually do you know stay together and that's also an episode that is pretty you know like I said overt on just showing off you know attractive women and then there's the episode that also shows off men with you know the three alternate worlds run by desires where the demon points out desires are empty I quite like Prince Charmed with this hilariously unreally perfect man that they conjure up for Piper you know the he knows everything she wants and he you know puts her and Wyatt first he's you know Hispanic just everything I just find the actor entering the manor singing if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands with his accent just hilarious it's just so perfectly and you know he sees Leo and it's not like you know testosterone big you know alpha male fight it's just you don't have to feel threatened by me you know just perfect and then I guess I also have to go into a wrong day's journey a right wrong day's journey into right I think it is where Paige repeatedly conjures Mr. Right and accidentally also conjures Mr. Wrong. Again, an example of overt objectif you know, just objectifying women, you know, the demonatrix, demonatrices, however you pluralize that term. The, I don't know, it's just, they already did the perfect man thing and it's just yet another case of Paige screwing up by using magic for her own you know, personal gain. There are consequences and it just gets really tiresome. Plus it's a really boring and you know half-assed kind of way to turn one of the sisters evil. You know the sisters have turned evil before and it was compelling. Here Paige turns evil for a couple of minutes and she's just turned back by, you know, Mr. Wrong being, you know, destroyed. And he's just, you know, they can destroy him because he was real and because Mr. Wright was also real. Granted, it does sort of hold up that, you know, they didn't establish that what happens to one also happens to the other necessarily, you know, it's not like when one, you know, pricks his finger or cuts his hand, it also affects the other, at least we're not shown this, but at the same time, the spell that conjured one also conjured the other, so making one real might make the other real. I can follow that logic, you know, but it just isn't that. It's, it's a pretty uninspired episode. 
I would say. I suppose that's more or less it. I think the the relationship between Chris and Leo can also be kind of fun, you know, early on he really mistrusts him and it's like, you know, apparently, you know, Chris was the only one who asked, hey, have you found out, you know, who actually sent you to Valhalla and, you know, Leo says in no uncertain terms, I'm on to you and, you know, as soon as I can prove it, I'm gonna bust you. And, you know, he, he's the he's the badass cop cliche at that point, basically. And we have, you know, and then going through various time periods, you know, I think that was essentially just to get them out of the episode and to provide a side story for that episode. But it is kind of fun. And that dinosaur is pretty good CGI. The... And then we have, you know, he realizes what's going on and, you know, we have the genie, Ginny the genie, who's a demon. I personally find this the far more compelling of the two episodes with genies, or at least, I don't know, the more entertaining one. And, you know, we also had French Stewart as a demon, as, as a genie in the second season, I believe, the second season finale. and. That one just isn't as overall entertaining. I don't know, maybe it's also because, you know, Phoebe gets turned into a genie. Richard turns into a genie. You know, there's so much. And then they possess the demon who used to be a genie and use her to get herself back into, you know, the bottle. And they presumably get it the heck away, you know, I don't know, orbit into a volcano or something like Leo did with something else important. I don't know, the grimoire. I don't know. Anyway, too many details to keep straight. It's just so much fun with, you know, all the wishes that go wrong. Phoebe going, I wish you, I really wish you wouldn't do that, and Chris orbing away, and he can't orb. So she has to spend another wish getting, you know, allowing him to orb again. And, you know, after Chris gets ownership of the bottle, I wish you would just get over the issues you have with me, you know, paraphrasing. And Leo is just instantly just complete bromance, you know, buddying up to him. And he's just, and everything he says after that, to Chris is just like so buddying up to, you know, the the whole, he's like, no, no, I'll worry about, you know, the, the magic later. Right now I want to write you an apology. It feels good to forgive you, man. And, you know, Chris is like, you know, okay, just not a letter. I got plenty of them growing up. And, you know, we know, we later realized that those were indeed from Leo. And he's like, I'm sorry, man. You want to talk about it? And he's like, no, no, just... We have to deal with this. I don't know, you seem kind of stressed. You know, just that whole... It's just hilarious. Uh, any other episodes to highlight? I don't particularly care for used karma and high school reunion. The karma one just feels... I don't understand how karma could take over the entire person. You know, I get, you know, earlier... Phoebe was possessed by, you know, ghosts, the other characters possessed by ghosts, and that makes sense, you know, that's part of what ghosts do, they haunt and they possess. How karma could do it, I don't really understand, and it just didn't seem, I don't know, when she said curses on this merger, I guess that's supposed to actually curse it, but it didn't, it wasn't a spell, she didn't use some kind of charm to activate, I don't know, I just don't, it's too much of a stretch for me, much of that episode. And high school reunion, I don't really follow how Phoebe turns into freebie again by, you know, reading that, I don't know, again, it's a bit of a stretch. The whole thing of you know, not everyone who's 
a prankster as a kid, you know, grows up to be a criminal, but some do. That was okay. The Cleaners. They appear in two episodes in this season, and I personally thought, you know, I like both episodes. The, the whole thing of, you know, why it is so powerful that he conjures a dragon from TV, and it, you know, there's exposure, there's innocence dead, or at least harmed. Not sure it actually confirms that some people died from it, but... And the cleaners show up to, you know, take away Wyatt and erase all memories of him. But Leo and Piper can still sort of remember. And we have the, you know, Chris, when, when Wyatt isn't there, he's like, why did I come back from the future? And then when Wyatt is there again, he's like, you know what? I don't want this other charge, I need to focus on the girls, I'm here to save Wyatt, you know, or he doesn't directly say that to Leo, I believe at that point that's still, you know, kept in the dark, but, you know, it does, it shows his determination, you know, to take Wyatt out, and he's like, why am I here? When Wyatt is there, it's like that, that is clearly his motivation, you know, and it leads us to theorize what is he there for? And even better, we actually do get an answer. Damn, you lost. The other episode with the cleaners, the crimes and witch demeanors. I quite like the whole trial with, you know, Barbas as a lawyer. It's, it's almost too perfect. He's he's so slimy and so despicable, so of course he'd be a prosecution attorney, you know, trying to get rid of something good, you know. So, you know, and the whole thing with, you know, you could argue that it's a partially, you know, partially a clip show, granted, but I like the framing device of it, and I do think that it's quite dramatic. I never did quite understand how Barbus, you know, who it is that allows Barbus to come back to, you know, doesn't seem to be Gideon, I think. I don't know, it does seem a little... But who, who cares? He's back, you know, gotta love Barbus. The... Spin City, I... I quite like it. It's, uh, you know, Jody Lynn O'Keefe is just awesome in that kind of role. You know, she just needs to play someone bitter and or goth and just really, really dangerous. You know, she does it here, she does it in, she appears in two, two, two and a half men episodes and one of them she definitely rocks the whole dangerous kind of do not mess with me kind of thing. She does it in Prison Break. She's just, you know, that's the kind of parts she needs to get more of. You know, those are really the only I can think of where I've seen her do that. And she's just fantastic every single time. She just convinces you, you do not want to mess with this girl, you know. And we also have Chris, you know, f first he is, you know, being affected by the spider demon, I think, or something like that is her name. But he keeps hitting Leo after that, you know, it's the kind of, he is furious that he was, you know, abandoned as a child. And, you know, it really works, and you really feel it. I suppose that's... Oh, how could I forget? Witch Wars. I don't know how other people feel about this. I just really love the episode, and it's a personal preference kind of thing. It's partially because I can't stand reality TV, and the show just 
it's basically a mouthpiece for people like me. You know, you have the lines of, you would think the demons thought of reality shows, but no, humans did it first. And, you know, humans are just lining up to humiliate themselves on national television. All reality shows are evil, or sick, or whatever it is Leo says. You know, just perfect, you know. I don't know, I guess if you like reality shows, you might also enjoy it. I just... I just love all the commentary on reality shows in it and you know not only does you know the charmed ones take out the apparently the crew of two I don't know exactly how that works out because it still changes cameras you know after both hosts are dead and we never actually see anyone you know in the anyone else in the control room they have the you know controls for the show. The hosts, the contestants, and the audience, the demonic audience, you know, plus in the audience we see these obnoxious types that I have a feeling are common in reality show viewership. You know, the people who are yelling at the screen and taking sides and judging people based on Nothing other than what is presented, you know. Yeah, I'm starting to rant, and I don't want to take up any more time, so hope you enjoyed it. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.